welcome to the Sarah Ashcroft Podcast. Today she'll be interviewing Ryan Coble from the Baptist Collegiate Ministries. Thanks for listening. Good morning, good evening, <laughs> wherever you are at. I'd like to congratulate you on finding this awesome podcast. My name is Sarah Ashcroft, and today I'll be interviewing an awesome guy named Ryan. Ryan, tell us about yourself. Uh, hi, my name is Ryan Coble. I'm uh, 31. I graduated with my Bachelor's of General Studies at the University of Central Oklahoma and my Master's of Divinity at Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary. I now work for Baptist Collegiate Ministries at Tulsa Community College with an emphasis on Northeast and West campuses. That sounds like so much fun. What do you do at those campuses? I love on the people there. That can be anything from serving a free lunch on Tuesdays and Wednesdays to... Insert plug. (laughs) Yeah. Or having Bible studies with students or just generally uh, being whatever people need me to be. Cool beans. So today we are going to be discussing college depression. Yes. Have you ever experienced college depression? Yes, I have experienced college depression. What started your college depression? I think that's a really hard question to say what starts it. I don't think I realized what was going on until I was in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. I went through uh, depression probably through my first year, two years of college, um, year and a half at least. And it was, uh, it was a really interesting time of just uh, general uh, wandering and lostness. Did you know you were depressed at the time, or did you think you were normal? Or You know, in the beginning, I don't think I knew I was depressed. I just, uh, I was sad or lonely. Um, later on, looking back, I can see the clear signs of depression in my life. Mm-hmm. But at the time, I don't think I fully grasped what was going on. I just thought, like, this is just... This is just the transition to college. Isn't this what this is supposed to be? And uh, it really really caught me off guard how far it went and how bad it got. Yeah, I completely understand that. So going through all of that, what got you out of it? What got me out of college depression, um, I think, is doing the opposite, I guess, of what got me into it. So I would say what got me into college depression was um, a general isolation in my life. I went to college and I discovered the wonders of World of Warcraft and other online video games. And now, what is War- World of Warcraft? World of Warcraft. You might be a little young, but people <laughs> of a certain age will know it all too well. Uh, it was a video game that was very popular where um, you could play for hours and hours and hours. And maybe, and by the time I ended up quitting, you could track my playtime um, not in minutes, hours, days or weeks, but my final playtime was counted in months. How many months? I believe three. Oh my gosh. By the time I quit. Um, And so uh, what happened though was about a year and a half into it, I realized that I really hadn't made many connections with people, um, that I had generally isolated myself. And uh, I got involved in local uh, organizations at campus at church and uh, that really helped me to build relationships and that's what really helped help me move forward in life. Was there anything specific said to you that got you out of your college depression? I wouldn't say there was anything that got me out of specifically my college depression, anything specific. Uh, I've, I've generally gone in and out of depressive states in my uh, life and I'll always remember um, Uh, work on a job where a gentleman came through and if you've ever worked a retail job you tell people every day have a nice day and I remember this one gentleman responded back to me he smiled and said it won't be for a lack of trying and I thought that was such a novel idea he's going to try to have a nice day and for a person who had gone through depression for as long as I had I was like I never thought about that I just thought nice days just happened to you but what if I tried to have one I just, it's always been something that stuck with me. Frustrated my friends at the time because they were upset that a random stranger had more of an impact on my life than a lot of them did in that area. (laughs) So as your current job as a college student ministry leader, Mm -hmm. do you see college depression a lot? I see it everywhere. 
Give me some examples. Um, so I started working at Tulsa Community College about a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. And it's very evident to me to see students who are either um, isolated, lonely, or generally just not sure of where they are at in life. And they're looking for some sort of new identifier and they easily slip into a college depressive state where they're kind of lost and meandering through life of just like, well, I guess I'm going to take these classes and I guess I'm going to take those classes. And without any real drive or direction, it's really easy to slip into a, well, you know, this is where I'm at in life. It's no big deal. And you can see their grade slide, their participation in a lot of things, their passion dies. It just, I I see it in a lot of ways, but I don't think it's what people expect depression to look like. Mm -hmm. Do you think your job addresses it at all with any students? Do you get to talk to students about your experience or do you just kind of try to help them out however you can? I mean, I would definitely say that in my job, I work to address the problem. Um, so I spread the gospel, which is to, which is about the glory of God. And also, part of that is being in community with fellow believers. And I think community is a large missing element in a lot of people's lives. I think that's what causes so much um, depression and causes so much Uh, anxiety is a lack of a community a lack of a tribe of people that you call your own and so one of the key things that we push at uh, BCM is not just um, that the gospel is something we need to share but then we need to bring people into relationship with each other because that is something we so desperately need I agree so we've been talking a little bit about college depression Do you have an exact definition for it, or do you think it's just a wide range of symptoms? So depression, I believe, is a very wide-ranging thing, but I think when we talk about college depression, I think we're specifically talking about a time frame that I believe specifically covers freshmen and sophomores. Um, And what this, I think, derives from, this is kind of my depression uh, uh, definition, is that for a student entering college is now going through a very large transition in their life. For the past 12 years, if they were in public school or however long their life was, they've had a very clearly defined social structure, social norm, life plan. They go to their school, they see their people, that's what they've done for the past 12 years. And they've developed an identity and a goal and a purpose and a reason in all of that. And then at the end of high school, they've now graduated, they've achieved that goal, and now they're set forth on this new path called college. And all of their identity, structures, social norms are gone. Um, And so now they're lost in trying this transition to redefine themselves. Who am I now? Who are my people now? And what is it that I ultimately want? Because, you know, when you went to high school and your goal was to go to college, well, now you're at college. What's your goal now? And for some students, they have that goal. They're saying, you know, I want to go be uh, a doctor. Well, and they know exactly where they're going. And you notice that they don't suffer with the depression as much as people. But we've made the goal so much go to college that we forgot to make the goal sometimes what happens next. And so a lot of people are lost. And then if you think back to high school, you saw the same people every day five days a week you sat in the same classes with them you had the same lunch with them they were your people and that was how you identified yourself whether you were a cheerleader or an athlete what sport did you play me i didn't play any sports i was in choir okay you were the choir person okay that's fine choir nerd okay but you drew some amount of identity from that Mm -hmm. and now you're in college and in your freshman year of classes did you have the same person in any two classes? No. So you said, how many classes did you take your freshman year? My freshman year, I took five classes. And you had no person in common in any five class. 
I did not. So you set. So you, you went from this structure of high school where you were around the same people, building the same identity, building the same structure, to then your freshman year being around complete strangers in the five different classes, having nothing in common. Correct. And so that I think is where a lot of our the idea of college depression comes from is this complete lack of social identity now because who am I I've, if I have to go introduce myself every single day of the week to brand new people. To some people, that's a relief. Maybe they didn't like who they were in high school and they can rebuild. But to most people, that's a loss of some kind. I think a lot of people struggle with finding their social identity again and don't know how to rebuild it. Yeah. And they come to college with this idea that they are going to fit in and have a great time, but they don't know how to practice that. And they're just kind of at a loss. Yeah. And a question is fit into what and fit into who? Because... Uh, Tulsa Community College has this problem even more because it's a pure commuter campus. Mm -hmm. You drive in, you take your class, and you drive away. Well, if you have strangers and no one in common in any of your classes, then who are you building a relationship with? Who are you building a new identity with? I think within the last decade, more high school students are going to community colleges because they're more affordable. Mm -hmm. What do you think the difference is between commuter schools and universities, such as OU or OSU, where you live on campus? And what do you think the difference is like that plays in with college depression? Uh, the biggest thing is housing. So if you live on campus, then that will start to help you build community, at least with the people in your new neighborhood. Um, I worked as an RA in college and one thing they tell you is that um, while people want to live in like the fancy nice dorm that has you know your own private bathroom your own private little kitchen area maybe that's actually the worst dorm for freshmen to live in freshmen actually need to go live in the crappiest dorm that has the public showers the public bathroom because you'll actually form more community there you'll interact with the same people every morning as you go brush your teeth and take your showers or whatever and I think that that communal aspect, you see it in a lot of schools where I think Oklahoma State and I think OU is instituted as well, they require the freshmen to live on campus. And the idea of that is to force them to interact with the campus, force them to, into relationship with each other. We all have this lovely idea that the people we've got to know in high school are going to be our friends forever. But Sarah, how long ago did you graduate from high school? I graduated a year and a half ago, so May 27, 16, yeah. Okay, and how many of your best friends of high school do you still keep in contact with? Honestly, I think three or four. Three or four? So it's surprising. Yeah. I'm definitely not average. And then I would definitely say you're yeah. an outlier because most people mm -hmm. who've developed their BFFs, um, as soon as high school's over and you're no longer forced to interact with them on a daily basis. Yeah, it's hard to keep up the relationship. It's hard. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's something people struggle with. And so I think for a commuter college such as TCC, it's a real challenge on how do you get people to invest in community because when we're talking about this purely from a depression issue, it's also an issue for the school as a business because students that are less involved, students that are less connected to each other are much more likely to drop out. Mm -hmm. And so a college is incentivized financially to help try to solve this problem because it wants people to buy into the identity. Do you think that community colleges are addressing the college depression epidemic amongst their students? Not that I've seen at my time at Tulsa Community College. Um, that's the only one I can speak to. Yeah. Do you think they, TCC for example, even knows that it's a problem? I think they know that it's a problem, but it would be very hard for them on how to address it. Because one thing for Tulsa Community College is that they have a large population of secondary students, which are non-traditional um, people in their 30s and 40s or upper 20s coming back to school. So they're probably not going to have these same problems because they have a life, they've established some sort of life outside of school. Um, but, so their freshmen I don't know if they, I've never seen anything on campus that would make me think that they're working towards this goal. I think um, what I've seen is their big push of student activities, mm -hmm. which is like clubs, but they don't want to call it clubs. So I think BCM is great with helping getting students involved, 
because it's a student activity and you get to meet people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that TCC is trying to push, but it's so hard to do that when students are determined that they can't get anything out of their community college experience. They're just going to go to class and go home, but they miss what student organizations are trying to offer. Mm -hmm. I think I think student organizations are a huge um, part of developing a healthy identity and a healthy um, just time at college. Humans as a species, we are very tribal people. Mm -hmm. We want to have our tribe. We want to have our us, our in-group. And, you know, that can range in size from person to person. Some people want a big group. Some people want a small group. But pe everyone wants a group of people to call theirs. And they want common goals and common interests. And the problem is, is that in college, it's very easy to become isolated and separated. And we don't think we are. I think that's a big problem with college today. Why this may be considered a new idea or a new topic isn't just commuter colleges. But I think a lot of it also has to fall on to how we use the internet and social media. We desire interaction with people. And we've replaced that with Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and Instagram, where we get likes and we get followers and we get shares, but we don't get what we truly need, which is an interpersonal connection with one another, you know? And so people have this idea of, look at all these friends Facebook says I have. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not really friendship. That's not really what people need. People need to sit down with each other and be in and what I like to call meat space, you know, where we're just pieces of meat sitting next to each other in a room. Um, we need that and not in, you know, hyperspace. We need, we need to see each other because the lives that we live on Facebook and Twitter are fake. Mm -hmm. I post... I post all these wonderful pictures of how great my life is, but you don't know the struggles of my life. You don't know what's really going on. And that's what everybody does. No one wants to post, you know. Everyone wants to seem perfect. Yes. Picture perfect. And that creates, and we see that, and we're like, and we know that we lie on the internet, mm -hmm. but we, for some reason, don't really comprehend that all the other people are lying as well. And so we're like, man, all of their lives seem great. And so it's easier to fall in this depression because mm -hmm. we see all the things that we're not doing. We see those people having a great time and those people doing this. And so it forces us to sometimes maybe become more insular and we want it. We want that community. We want to be part of a mm -hmm. tribe of people, but we're not, we're not sure how to do that in a lot of areas. And so going back to what you originally asked, you know, I think student organizations and other clubs and associations are a great way to help people find that mm -hmm. I think social media is a big barrier when it comes to getting to know the people around you because mm -hmm. you can be at a table of people but you can be on your phone you can't get to know anyone actually around you mm -hmm. so I think that is a big factor that has changed within the last decade decade and a half with college students trying to get to know the people around them because they're so absorbed on like what's on their screen yeah, it's a real challenge for ministers and ministry stuff of just the idea of you, you can get students in a room with free pizza. I do that every week. I can have a room full of people having free pizza and every single one of them will sit at different tables and all look down at their phone. Yeah. And they all want, they would all, I think people would love to have personal interaction with people. They'd love to be part of a community, but that's risk and that requires vulnerability mm -hmm. and I could fail versus I have my phone that can satisfy me right now. And yeah. so instant gratification. And so I think we've missed out on a lot of opportunities that mm -hmm. didn't exist or that did exist, but we just failed to uh, jump on them. You know, our parents didn't have cell phones. Our parents didn't have all that stuff. So when they got to, to college, they had to interact with people. That was, there was no choice. Mm -hmm. um, now we have a choice to not interact with people. So speaking of parents, how do you think parents with college students today can help their children succeed in college and avoid that college depression stage? I think it's a real hard question for what can parents do. 
um, because I think in some ways they understand what college was, but in some ways they don't understand what it has become. So there's no more time in the library. I can now just look up everything on my internet, um, on my computer. And so I think for parents, I think they just need to be willing to listen and be willing to understand Mm -hmm. because it's very easy to say, well, I have experience with this and this is what you need to do. And to realize that that may no longer apply. And I think a lot of people are afraid of disappointing their parents or letting their parents down. And that can cause problems of like, I don't want to seem like a failure to my parents. And so my suggestion of what can parents do for if they notice depression or if they're afraid of that depression may happen is to uh, help their student child uh, navigate the freedom and openness Mm -hmm. that they're now experiencing as they go through a transition. One thing I noticed um, in my time in college and even in some of my uh, college ministry, the people who do best their freshman year working through the transition to college are probably the people who had the worst home life. Um, People who had absent parents, people who had um, uh, just generally, you know, not the best examples in life because they know what it is to look after themselves. They know what to do with their personal individual freedom Mm -hmm. Um, versus a child who's been, you could say, helicopter parented or over parented. They have no idea what to do with the freedom of choices now offered to them and they can go a bit more off the deep end. How do you think students who are going through college depression can make their parents aware in a way that conveys the need that they need help, but doesn't seem like they want to come back home and like be babied? That's a really, it's a real struggle because I know a lot of students want to appear like they have everything together, especially Mm -hmm. to their parents. We don't want to show weakness. Um, But I think an honest conversation of just what you are going through at the time of, you know, tell your parent, I'm really struggling with this. I'm struggling with loneliness. I'm struggling with sadness. I'm struggling with the issues that I'm currently dealing with and to let your parent know that that's how you feel and that's what you're currently experiencing. Um, I, I don't think that should inspire a complete babying response from your parents, but I think an openness and willingness to discuss mm-hmm. what you're going through. Cause I think a lot of us are afraid to admit when we're failing. And I think in, openness and a willingness to discuss that would really benefit both the parent and the child so that way they can both know where each other stands. Do you think that the added pressure from society that when you turn 18 you're an adult, do you think that affects college depression and first-time college students? I think it does and I think a lot of it is, uh, I've seen a lot of studies on this about how in America we don't have a transition phase between you're a child and you're an adult. Mm-hmm. College is the closest thing we have to that. You go from being a child, treat it like a child, having practically um, no rights or privileges really um, through high school, then congratulations, you're in college, be an adult, do all these adult things. Um, and there's a very rapid change and that's the transition that really works hard on people. They don't know how to adapt, they're not sure really what to do. Um, So I think a lot of managing that transition Mm -hmm. is something that I'm not sure how we handle that. I'm not, how we handle that is something that really defines whether we're going to go through depression. Again, that loss of identity, loss Mm -hmm. of social structure, um, and having to rebuild that, it really defines who you're, who you're going to be and how college is going to treat you is where you take that. So, as I said, you know, the people who had to look after themselves a bit more at home, they're handling this transition better because they've been working on it for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, for someone who came from a helicopter parent and is, dumped, is dropped off at college, 
they're going to have a very hard time because they're not sure how to look after themselves. Mm -hmm. They're not sure what to do without someone telling them what to do all the time. So I think we need to be offering students and children more individual freedom, not complete, you know, anarchy, but allowing them to make some personal choices while they're while they're at home. Mm -hmm. So that way they know how to make them and they can fail a little bit before they go to college and start failing a lot. Yeah, I agree. So do you have anything you'd like to say to college students that are listening that could be dealing with college depression right now or may have friends that are dealing with college depression? I think my main thing that I would like to say to students out there is that um, it will get better. Mm -hmm. I know that it sucks right now and I know that it will suck for a while. I say that as from experience. Um, but what you have to be willing to do is to put yourself out there a little bit and just go to these clubs or organizations and be willing to meet people. There's a lot of good people out there in this world, but we're not going to find them on Facebook and we're not going to find them on Twitter. And it's very easy to simulate friendships and it's very easy to have these simulated experiences of community we can listen to podcasts we can watch youtube videos we can see all these great things that make us feel like oh yes i'm part of this community mm -hmm. but until you're actually physically in the same room as a person looking them in the eye and getting to know them and seeing them when they're not at their best and letting them see you not at your best that's what we need that's what all of us instinctively need. We need our people. And you need to find your people. And I can tell you that at BCM, we'd be happy to be your people. But um, it's something that we all deeply need to find. Because mm -hmm. if we don't, and then we become isolated. Um, and it tears at us. And the greatest example of this is in prison, there is something called solitary confinement. And if a person is kept in solitary confinement for too long, they go insane. It's a, it's a fact. It's not like, a, oh, some people snap. It's no. If you are kept isolated from the world long enough, it will drive you insane. And, what, and we think we're not isolated because we talk to people on Twitter and we text and we, you know, do whatever on the Internet. But we forget how isolated we've truly become. And so I just encourage you to find people. Mm -hmm. meet people and that can be in a lot of different ways and look at a lot of different things but we need that i agree well ryan thank you so much for mm -hmm. your input on college depression and i hope everyone has a great day okay.